Nearly everyone agrees that economic growth is good. Can't believe I just said that, but I think it's true. Well, back to reality. Nearly everyone agrees that economic growth is good as long as my neighbor can't afford a better house than I can, or as long as it demotes the CEO of Exxon to dog catcher, or as long as it doesn't give the polar bears an anxiety disorder, or the, the numbers don't care about or. They don't care about our philosophies or our agendas or our prejudices. The numbers tell us how we can thrive and survive. And the numbers will eventually wipe us off the face of this earth if we choose to ignore them. I'm reminded of an ad some dentists used to use. If you ignore your teeth, they will go away. The numbers tell us that economic growth, which measures the goods and services an economy produces, is the only way, not, not the best way, the only way to maximize prosperity for the rich and the poor and everyone in between. They tell us that economic growth in free economies is faster than in restricted economies and that free economies have the richest poor people in the world and that income inequality is about the same in countries that try to force it as in those that don't. For Homo sapiens, Commerce is life, and life is commerce. You, you cannot separate the two. They are two words for the same thing. The numbers you're about to see come from the Cato Institute and the Fraser Institute, which every year provide a very detailed analysis of outcomes in free versus restricted economies, and it does three primary things. First, it defines economic freedom as the extent to which a country permits personal choice, voluntary exchange, and open markets and to which it ensures clear definition and enforcement of property rights. Second, it measures the extent to which economic freedom exists by examining several factors. The size of government, this is essentially the percentage of wealth generated by the private sector that is spent by the government. The legal system, which determines whether the rule of law is being upheld generally and property rights are being protected specifically, the health of the monetary system, which is measured by inflation and other factors, free trade with other countries, which we in the United States have been not so good at lately, and finally regulation, essentially the extent to which the government controls decisions by business owners. Third, based on these factors, it breaks 162 countries into four groups ranked from most free to least free. With most of Europe and North America in the first quartile, some of Europe and South America in the second, Russia, China, and Turkey, among others in the third, and Africa, the Mideast, and Venezuela in the fourth. It summarizes how these four groups compare against each other. As in most studies using large data sets, the most useful information comes from broad trends over long periods of time, in this case, 162 countries over about 20 years. Now, there are a number of charts in this report. You can get the full report at the link below. I've chosen the four that I think most clearly quantify the economic situation in each quartile and that are the least subject to subjective factors. Countries with free economies are much richer than those with restricted economies. This is as close to an objective fact as you get in economics, and it's a logical outcome. Which country is going to create more wealth? One with a larger private sector, whose core goal is to create wealth, or one with a larger government sector, whose core goal is to spend it? We cover this dynamic in more detail in the segment called The Drive to Thrive. Now, Sorry, ultra-conservatives, but small government alone is not enough to make an economy free. When basic rule of law has not been established, when business owners can use regulation to collude with politicians and squelch competition, when policemen and military officers take bribes, when judges are corrupt, you have a society moving toward anarchy. And just to be clear, anarchy does not equal freedom. Anarchy is breaking her rules. Anarchy doesn't work. Countries with free economies have the richest poor people in the world, not even close. 
Now, there's still too much poverty. I agree. And there's a clear way to cut that further, and that's more freedom. And there's a clear way to create more poverty, and that's more force. Not only is there more prosperity in free economies, not only are the poor people much richer, but these gains are spread similarly across populations in free economies as they are in much poorer restricted economies. This fact does not fit the political narrative of many people, but here are the numbers. You can see them just as clearly as I can. The share of income earned by the poor in free economies is roughly the same as in restricted economies, and income inequality is about the same. If income inequality was being reduced by government attempts to force it, you'd see these dots falling in a trend from left to right. They don't. There are plenty of psychological and political motivations to explain the widespread belief that these things are not true. That doesn't change these numbers. Now, I encourage links to any studies on these issues that are statistically broad and thorough. By that, I mean dozens of countries over decades, not three years in Cuba starting in 1968. But as a wise man, Nassim Taleb, author of Black Swan and many other great books, once said, logic can be useful without statistics, but the statistics cannot be useful without logic. In this vein, I can, and I hate to sound absolutist, but in comparing the merits of free economies, you can completely ignore any studies that compare raw poverty rates in one country against another. These studies can be useful within a country because they show how various sectors of the population are doing, but they become absolutely useless when comparing one country to another because they are measuring entirely different things. Poverty rates measure the relative earnings of the poorest residents in that country against other residents of that country, completely ignoring how that country overall is performing against other countries. For simplicity's sake, on the left, let's look at a country with average daily income of $10 a day, where the poorest residents earn $5 a day. Then on the right, look at a country with an average daily income of $100 a day, where the poorest residents earn $40 a day. The country with the low earners getting $40 a day has a higher poverty rate than the country with the low earners getting $5 a day. This is how, in some studies, you see countries like the United States having higher poverty rates than like Mexico and Chile and similar countries. When something seems to make no sense at all, there's a very good chance that it makes no sense at all. Now, bearing all these numbers in mind, I think it was Mark Twain who popularized the statement, there are three kinds of lies, lies, damn lies, and statistics. And I think it was the Democratic senator, Daniel Patrick Moynihan, who said, everyone is entitled to his own opinions, but not his own facts. You hear that one a lot these days, mostly when someone is about to force their opinions on you. Here, we believe the following. You're entitled to your own opinions. You can even have your own facts, but you are not entitled to make them mine. I got one more thing I want to share with you. I want to close with some recent calculations by not one, but two uh, journalists. See if you can spot the error. You see it as a possibility if he wants to spend a billion bucks beating this guy, he could do it. Absolutely. Um, somebody tweeted recently that um, actually with the money he spent, he could have given every American a million dollars. got it. Let's put it up yeah. on the screen. It, when I read it, uh, tonight on social media, it kind of all became clear. Bloomberg spent 500 million on ads, U.S. population 327 million. Uh, don't tell us if you're ahead of us on the math. He could have given each American $1 million and have had lunch money left over. It's an incredible way of putting it. It's an incredible way of putting it. It's true, it's disturbing, it does, it does suggest. You're what the French call les incompetents. What? Give it to me, give it to me. Like a ball.